Hi, this is Yvonne Galusha, and the purpose of this little video is to go over creating queries in Access that are going across multiple tables. So I'm going to start by going to Query Design View. A dialog box appears that basically allows you to select the tables that you want to query from. So I'm going to start with the teacher table. This is the same database I used in class and the contract table. Notice that the relationship between these two tables right here is in place because we put it in place in the overall table relationship view under database tools relationships. You can put a relationship in place just between two tables right here in query design view but keep in mind if you do it here it only applies to this query. So typically if you're doing uh, common tables you would already have them relationships established. So now you just select the fields that you want to display. I'm going to go ahead with uh, teacher first name, it, excuse me, last name, and then I want to use um, the contract end date, lesson type, and the student ID in right now. Now if I run this query, click run, these are the results, 146 records, and so you can see here it's kind of organized by um, teachers, and they can have multiple contracts. Let's come back here and I'll show you a couple things how to refine or organize your information. If we go again to Query Design View, you can use the sort, and let's say we want to sort it by ascending, and that would be A to B, A through Z, excuse me, last names. So now if I run it, you're going to see this in alphabetical order, which uh, oftentimes that makes it easier to find information. The other thing that you can do, we talked about this in class, is to uh, set aside certain criteria if you only want to see certain pieces of information, and you would do that here in the criteria row say for example greater than a certain date. Um, let's say we only want to see the contracts that come after let's say August so I'm going to say August 1st and this data is around 2010 so that's the syntax after August 1st 2010. Now run it. So now I just have 37 record showing and you can see here the dates are predominantly in 2011 and toward the end of 2010. Still in alphabetical order by last name. Now what if you want something more meaningful than student ID? I, I didn't emphasize that but look here how this isn't very informative just a student ID. So if you come then back to design view and you want to get the student name, there is no student name in the contract table. You just have the join or foreign key field. So in order to get the student name, we need to, I right clicked, show table dialog box, add the student table, I double click there, made that appear. I need to then, I'm highlighting, you see that little arrow that came down? I highlighted this column, hit the delete key to remove student ID, and now I'm going to add student name first and last. Let me run the query again. So now what you're seeing is the student name, and that's good, but I want to point out something here. This is something that you got to think about when you set up your tables, because where this header is coming from is the caption when you set up your table fields. And so that's why it reads nice if, as long as you've made a good caption. I intentionally did this so that you could see on the last name on the teacher, I designated the word teacher last name, but usually we just get in a hurry and say first name and we think that's good enough. But you'll notice, for example, in this particular query, you don't know who's the teacher and who's the student maybe because you just see first name, last name. 
on each, except I did put teacher last name on that caption. So remember, this is the caption field attribute when you set up your tables. It's a good idea to have good captions, and that way you have good headers on your queries. Now, the other thing that I went ahead and, or I will now go ahead and talk about, is what about if we want a calculated field? So, for example, we have a cost of monthly lesson cost and rental cost. We maybe want to know the total. So if I add these fields, and you actually don't have to have them added to do this. I'll show you if we don't have them in the query. And we just want a total cost. What you would do here. You want to go to the, we're, it's similar to what you did in form calculated field, except now we're going to do it in the query. I right clicked and we want to go to builder. And this is similar, it looks the same. And you can build an expression using this calculated field. So I'm going to go ahead and get the values from the tables and it, they're both going to come out of the contract table. So I want to say here equals contract date. I guess we don't type the equal here. I'm going to do monthly lesson. I double clicked and then I'm going to type plus and then rental cost. And I say OK. And I'm going to run it and show you what we have. So notice I got a total value. I didn't have to have those two fields in the query to in, a, in order to use them to get a calculated field. However, this little expression 1 isn't very helpful. So in order to get that where it's something more meaningful since it's not a caption in a table, you need to come back here and you notice right before the colon that is what it puts in a header because it didn't know what to put. So we're going to change that expression 1 to total monthly cost. And notice you still need to leave the colon there because that's the separator. So when I say run now for the header, you're going to see total monthly cost on that particular query. So that's the end of this little video on how to do a query from across multiple tables in Access. I will just close it and show you that if you look at SQL view, you can see some of the SQL where it's the same kind of format where you have the fields you're selecting, the tables where they come from, the word join is used here instead of the equal sign and an inner join has, it's kind of beyond the scope of this class where we're not going to get into inner and outer joins. You don't have to worry about that for um, our intents and purposes, just to understand the SQL that we cover in class. And then the order by clause was added because I put a sort on the query. Thank you very much.